so um, first off, like it's really late, I've been playing all evening, I had a little nap, um, and uh, first off, uh, yeah. yeah, I've been looking for footage, um, Keith Sutton, Matt Swanson, got any footage? Because there should be some full band stuff around. I found this, so. Genius, isn't it? But we're not going to stick with that. What we're actually here for is uh, I was going to very quickly. Oh. There's, that's, by the way, this is played um, completely, uh, I'm not plugged into anything, there's no mic, proper little folk club. So there is stuff out there. Anyway, let's get us into a good position. We have things to show thee. Things to show thee. Right. Cold in the black. So the golden goose, here she be, here she be, look I've got to get you into a position where we can all see and you can hear the guitar, I think I've got it, I've got an idea, one second, one second, let's see, that might do it, let's have a look. see me enough oh I know little tiddly wildy there we go yeah um, I should have done this in the daylight really um, very annoyed today gone through another bloody patch lead uh, but um, yeah I'm exceptionally pleased um, I've made a few little adjustments I've adjusted the action I've adjusted the height I mean, I'm going to go through a proper, like, Floyd Rose tutorial to show you how to do all that. Because it is, some people find it very much a pain in the ass. I have to say, I adore working on the Floyd Rose. I love it. I think it's because it's complex. There's so much of it. And it's like, it reminds me of, like, I used to race mountain bikes. And it reminds me of them. The way that there's so much, like, feel. There's a lot of feel in the Floyd Rose. You know, I love the way that it is floating. It's not like a Strat Trim. <clears throat> you know, a Strat Trim, for uh, the way I set it up, is hard against the block. You know, this is floating. Which is an entirely different kettle of fish. Literally, you just thought we'd pick that up, by the way. Let's see if it's in tune still. No, but it's not far either. Considering what I was doing to it before before I picked up the camera. So yeah, it's like um You know, it's free floating, so you've got like the spring tension. Oh look, yeah, I'm out. I put a back plate. I found a matching back plate for the scratch plate. Um, 
I uh, yeah, the way that it's like you know the springs and the strings are in perfect tension, and you find you find that perfect balance. It's so rewarding about it. It plays so well now. I've raised the action a little bit. <laughs> Some of the things I really like about it, um, it's like doing the stuff with your heel of your hand. So it's like... You know, it's not all about the extreme metal stuff. You know, in fact, uh, I was saying to Malco the night that I bought this, um, well, the night that I got it delivered, oh, you know, I'm dicking around with like... I've literally got five minutes since 11 o'clock, so I can't be too loud, so I'm sorry you can't hear it too well. But uh, we'll do another one on this, it's just a little prelude. But yeah, I made one change, it came with these big like metal knobs, like what you get on a telecast from Black. And I put these chicken heads on, because this motherfucker... Now, um, a, a strat knob is about there, a strat volume knob is about there. And they're quite hard for a lot of people to deal with. And this is pushed forward just a bit. And I remember thinking about it when I saw it, you know, being demoed by Mal, that uh, it's a bit... Yeah. So I put these chicken heads on, and they're very low profile, as you can see. And barely higher than the strings. Um, and they're bloody perfect. And I kind of think that they kind of suit the look of the guitar in a funny sort of way. I mean, tiny knobs on a big body guitar. It's a very big body, this. Don't really appreciate it until you put it next to, like, you know, the Yamaha or Strauss thing. And I'll show you, like, uh... oh, I can't be asked to do that. You'll see it when it's hanging on. But, uh, yeah, another thing, I had to get rid of the Golden Wonder. It's the Golden Goose now. And look, you can see some of the figuring on that. I thought these were tool marks at first, right? When I first got it, and it was, like, you know, night time, so I'm in artificial light, and I thought, oh, tool marks. No, that's that's figuring. This is a lovely bit of hard... This is the highlight of the guitar, the neck. Um, really nicely fretted, really nicely finished, nice bit of rosewood, compound radius fingerboard, and some lovely figuring, really lovely figuring. Um, you know, Malco did a wonderful job putting this together. Um, really did. And, um, yeah, thank you very much, Mad Malco. I'm really happy with this guitar. Um, What's amazing is, uh, you know how it is, like, the reason I bought this was because, like, the other Floyd Rose guitar that I had on the table, really interesting, maybe Samick, um, it's got, imagine, like, a, um, a Jackson Dinky, but with, like, the horns of a BC Rich Warlock, that's kind of what it looks like, um, super uh, cool looking guitar it's nice like deep blitz it's sort of nice sort of deep sort of um, you know um, a deep sort of red um, like a Qatar flag red um, like the you know the uh, Tibetan Buddhist sort of robe red um, with like binding um, and an upside down headstock so yeah, I think, you know, what's good now, so that's come back on the table, now the price of that is ridiculous, like, it's ridiculous, like, but he's, like, he's, he's returned to the internet, um, and so that's back on the table, now that I've got this, you know, that's back on the table, um, it's, like, always the way, once you, once you commit to something, um, it, the other thing, anyway, that, that stuff happens a lot, so I'm still going to get that, I think, in the new, well, definitely going to get that. Um, and that's going to be like all out metal with a single coil, like HSH. This one's going to be more classic, so not only a Floyd Rose guitar, but a classic Floyd Rose guitar. This is not a all out metal guitar, this is a little bit rounder. This is very Sonic Youth looking guitar, very grungy, and, uh, and so a little bit rounder. So we're going to bring out the classic rock character of this guitar, and uh, the other Floyd Rose one. When she arrives, 
she'll be a proper like full on metal bird. Um, so yeah, there you are. Um, I uh, I've literally been at it all day, and then I had a nap, so I just did. You know, I didn't. I was too busy playing it to want to do a video, but uh, literally one minute to eleven. Um, didn't have much time to dick around with. I thought, ah, I'll quickly do a little vid. But yeah, she's uh, like my glory board. <laughs> Musicians and special ops. They've always got their glory boards. All right, do you want to have a look around? Have a look around. It's pretty dense in here. <laughs> that's the telly that's going to Chris. Uh, that's my electroacoustic that I do gigs with. That's my little mini guitar that's tuned to a high G. Um, that's a two and a half grand uh, Manuel Raimundo Flamenco guitar. That's an encore classical guitar. I actually use them both. Uh, yeah, Golden Wonder, Bits of Caster, Stratocaster, Super Strat. The two gigging F types, Les Paul type guitar, um, Gajira type Telecaster, two humbuckers. There's the Paisley Tele, two P basses, uh, the classic Tele, Orange Amp, Fender Champ, Fender Champ, Fender Deluxe, Little Marshall, Little Old Honer from the 90s, Laney R4, Silly Drum Machine, Lovely Vox Amp, Portable Buskin Amp, Keyboard, Effects, 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 Effects. You know it, you've seen it all. Anyway, you'd be good. I'm going to go back to sleep. 